far after. Mm -hmm. um, so it, there's a lot of teams, a lot of kind of games to sink our teeth into. But LATAM, we were here last year with LATAM. Mm -hmm. they, it was a purely LATAM tournament. Um, so they're very familiar with OJ and we're very familiar with them. And I think it's going to be exciting to see the first game Obviously, Liquid versus Team Jens Mortis. And I'm already yes. apologizing if I'm getting that wrong. <laughs> For pronunciations already, yeah. we'll probably have more of those tonight, of course, because uh, yeah. Brazil, they've got some pretty funky fresh names. Uh, a lot of free letter names as well. Yeah, a lot of adding letters to yeah. a name too, um, which is great because it makes a great to shout out loud when they do absolutely ridiculous plays, which, again, we're very familiar with. Yep. But yeah, Team Jens Mortis, which is the lesser seen teams. So I'll start mm -hmm. with them, which is uh, Bataglia, Elia Dan, Felsen, Venus 16, and KLN. They're the ones that are going up against the absolute juggernauts mm -hmm. that are liquid. Yeah, you kind of have to look at it and think, well, Team Liquids, here we go, move on to the next round already, because uh, this kind of should be a landslide, we think. Look, you look at a team who uh, is kind of being picked up, just five guys get together, you play the qualifiers, you've qualified through, against Team Liquid, who we know are the only Latin American teams, uh, team who have ever, ever done anything internationally. They're the only team who's actually won a championship. Yeah, and that's the thing about this. So obviously we've said some teams have come from the open qualifiers mm -hmm. and some teams in those open qualifiers got, well, they got a little bit lucky in that they got a bye um, almost straight in. So mm -hmm. if there's any players out there that are looking to kind of get their start in, yep. bam, start signing up for tournaments. You never know. Move you, to Brazil. Just go for you it. You might be playing on a big Just stage against Get all Liquid the money. Get, go to Brazil. As your first game. Um, but now that luck's kind of run out. And I guess we'll see in the map ban yeah. how this is going to try mm -hmm. and break down between yep. the two. Yeah, map bans. Always going to be a big thing. And of course, best of three. Typically, we're just the best of one for online shows if you're looking at Pro League and Challenger League. But no, we are going all in with what we have in store to make sure this is going to be, you know, the better team wins. You know, we've talked about this, look, some teams can get pretty lucky in a best of one and can try and cause an upset. Yeah, and some teams just really, really struggle with best of ones. It, yeah. You can see some teams be absolutely outstanding mm -hmm. at a LAN when they're in that kind of situation, but others are just, uh, they shut down, mm -hmm. unfortunately, and they, they struggle to get it in themselves into this. Obviously, we don't really have a huge amount of stats on TGM, Team Gens Mortis, but we have more than enough stats about Liquid, and we can kind of guess where they're going to want to go. Oh, there's, there's so much things we can talk about. Liquid, if you look at their maps, Cafe was a great one for them at DreamHack Montreal, which was their last LAN event. Uh, they didn't get beaten. You know, I think they you know they had 7 O's in there as well. 7 0 and G2 nonetheless, which is pretty ridiculous to do that to, of course, the world champions at the moment. Mm hmm Bank's also another great one for Liquid. We know that from the Latin American scene. It's a map which they're not afraid of going to. First ban, though, Border, makes sense from Liquid's side of things whenever they're going up against a team uh, who is unknown to them. And Border is a map that every team can play, no matter who you are. Border is so simple, Fluke. Yeah, everyone knows Border. Everyone knows the boards of Border, and everyone knows how to make it work. Um, it used to be the cited thing about Oregon was where good teams and big teams go to lose. Now that is Border, and there is the second one off, and that is uh, Consulate. So That's that, CAF. Is that CAF? Yes, yeah, sold CAF. Oh, Calf. yeah. Yeah, sorry. I'm just really bad it at this. It wasn't that long ago, Fluke, since the rework. Come on. I know. You're I know. an old man. You're getting old. Yeah, it's my eyes. They're just not really working. CAF, and... Harping back to previous mentioned things, that's a smart ban. Oh, yeah, that's the obvious one. Uh, if you're TGM, that's one of their best. They had an absolute steamroll on that map throughout DreamHack Montreal, of course. Uh, we've talked about that. Uh, you know, you look at Liquid's run in DreamHack. It, it was something short of a miracle. Nobody thought that they were going to do that well, if you look at recent results. Still, Liquid didn't get Pro League Finals which is unfortunate for them. Instead, NIP and, of course, FaZe is going to be there. So this is one of two last chances now for Team Liquid to really make it to the sixth invite because we have this, our RG Pet Miner, and also that leads up into the LAN event during December. But then there's also those closed quals or open quals, wherever you want to really take part in, whenever that's going to be the online version where that's going to be the last chance for any team. And, of course, you never really want to go into those tournaments because the last time Liquid did, they got beat by Team 1 for the rally quals. Yeah, it's the thing about the region as well. It's gotten much stronger, much better. And it, it, in a way, it's similar to APAC, where it kind of like gets better in and mm -hmm. amongst itself. It, it improves as it battles against each other. And then it has these showings on the global stage. And it's almost a surprise to see, oh, you know, Team 1's showing up at mm. this point. And uh, Immortals, and that is the first pick, which is Bank. And that is old traditional. For Already? The We're on fire with the, the bands and picks. I know. And, uh, apart from the one where I couldn't actually read the little... <laughs> you couldn't realize <laughs> what map it was. Couldn't. You've is had that, a rough week, though, on the that, old map picks, haven't you? Yeah, but, you know, that's going to keep continuing. 
maybe by the end of this run of qualifiers, I'll know Pick which Pick the next map. map. Go on, let's see if you're right. Um, right, well, again, it's Jens Mortis, and I have no idea about what they like to play or what they don't. They banned out Cafe. You know what? Curveball Villa. Let's go another tactically deep map. I'll go with a consulate pick. I don't think Villa is going to be there. Oh, uh, oh my! What's happened? Okay, what has happened? Villa. Have you, you know just got why? one right? Here's here's what I think about that is because Liquid l uh, love to ban Villa. They often remove Villa from their pool. Um, alongside, to be fair, Consulate. So I think they've gone, okay, let's bring this. It's a big map. It's tactically driven. If they can bring out some creative strategies, maybe they can hope that, the, you know, Liquid, who can be quite an aggressive team, stumble on the bigger size? Maybe. But, but then again, you've just gave uh, a player like Nask the ability to crouch walk around a massive map. Yeah, yeah, that exists. As, but I think when you're... When you're a team that hasn't really had a major run before in uh -huh. any sense of the league and you're up against Liquid, it's picking <laughs> Try anything, poison. Yeah. Yeah, it's picking but, poison. But that, that's the thing, though, about uh, Best of Freeze, especially with the ban-ban pick-pick. Yep. If you're bans, you either ban your worst map or you ban the other team's best map. And yeah. of course, whenever you're picking, you then pick either your best map or you pick the other team's worst map. Yeah, so I'm assuming at this point, I mean... This is. I'm just going to call this uh, Consular is probably going to get banned out and Club. Oh well, Clubhouse does go as well. I think Coastline Litero is going to be our last one to play on. Personally, so it's going to be a liquid ban. So they get to choose really what third map they want to go to, and it's going to be the Coastline. <laughs> um, I would say it's kind of expected from Liquid in terms of what three maps they've, they've kind of picked. Kind of shows us that they don't want to give away anything on console. And like we've talked about, they're, they're a great team on console. They have some pretty good strategies that kind of helps them with their aggressive LATAM uh, aggression that we've talked about in terms of jumping out windows and spawn peeking, whatever it is. Yep. There's a lot of stuff there that Liquid can kind of save and try and keep them themselves because more than likely we're expecting Liquid to move into the later stages of this tournament. Yeah, uh, you kind of look at the early days for all of these where it's one of the uh, open qualifier mm -hmm. teams generally stacked against an invite qualifier team. And it's a lot of, especially in a region like this where they didn't have a huge amount of open uh, signups, it's tough opening day <laughs> games yeah. for a lot of these teams. Um, you know, whether they know stuff that we don't, I guess we're going to have to find out as we jump in to map one, game one of these closed qualifiers, and instantly Thatcher is off the board from Gens Mortis. Thatcher ban is, has been a bit more of a common thing, especially for Bank, with the addition of Kaid, more importantly, because whenever he goes to go for the Kaid, only person to get rid of those is gonna be the Thatcher. Yep. So it seems to be that we might go down that route of a Kaid ban here from Liquid if they want to try and nullify that effect, or both teams might just go at it uh, in terms of the Kaid. Habana as well. I always love to see at least one hard breacher abandon bank because it gives the defending team a, an actual chance at defending basement. Basement, yes, is it's pretty he heavily favored in terms of defense, but for the most part, if you have all three hard breachers available, you can open up everything. And of course, we know there's at least five hatches there on the basement that teams like to get open. You have walls you can also breach. You need to try and nullify one of those, and a banner is always kind of going to be the one that takes the hit. So you are now relying solely on your Fermites, uh, but there is no Kaid being banned away. So it has to be a Kaid pick here from TGM if they want to successfully try and stop these Fermites as well as they can. But they are bringing the Maverick, though, from Liquid, so that also does counteract that. Yeah, having the Maverick on this point is it's par for the course. Nowadays, you generally see it almost consistently. Obviously, we know what Liquid is capable of, and this is the surprise that TGM might be able to bring. There is the sixth pick to Kaid. Going to try and keep a bit more control over those hatches, which become absolutely integral to whatever defense you're running down below. Uh, Valkyrie bring the information as well. It's one of the things about this region and bank is it gets so explosive so quickly that I think, Attackers you know, it's not going to be a long time until we start seeing more and more of this kind of loose aggression. The org from Kaid is rarer seen, I would say. Yeah, it did get a buff not so long ago in terms of its damage output, but I still think the Sniper Shotgun is going to be your all for this pickup. You can play many of the long angles. We've seen that thing tear heads away. It's oh. it's strong. It's so strong. So, basement, of course, we're going to be typically expecting a lot of denial uh, for TGM. They're going to be bringing smoke there, of course, a bit of a standard pick. C4s as well. Two C4s. Sometimes we see more than that, but they are then picking up the Maestro, and those Maestro cameras can be pretty deadly, and you can also play that really long angle where they would remove uh, the double wall right beside that A-bomb site. 
remove the garage wall, and you can just tap heads from garage with that ACOG. Yeah, the kind of beast that that weapon is and the kind of control that you mm -hmm. can have, especially when you see it combined with the cameras to keep these kind of closer sights of information. And look at the pace of Nesk here, wasting no time at all. Sees the camera is already dropped by the time he starts pushing onto the lobby. And now it's just a matter of trying to get inside as well. You know, this is something that we're going to see more and more common from these guys. And there is a bit of a counter there. Jaeger holding on the top of the stairs. The crossfire pushes up from main as well. A great little pincer there, instantly locking him down. I don't think Nesk expected that much that high. There's the cover from the big front windows as well as Sexy Cake at least refrags. But there's still one more man upstairs. Yeah, questionable air from Nesk. He runs straight into already an early death for him. And we're going to pitch this man as the kind of soul and that main man for Liquid. We've talked about this so many times before. Nesk is Team Liquid. He is, at one point, was the best player in the world. That's one thing we can never take away from the guy. You think back whenever they did win Atlantic City Finals, unstoppable. Nobody was ever peaking that man. And since then, maybe it's because they haven't had as many international showings as what we kind of expect from Liquid last time they were there was, of course, in towards that invite. And already another kill for TGM. A roaming kite has managed to slip through the crack somehow against Sexy Cake. And I haven't seen a drone yet, Fluke. You know, it looked like obviously there was so much pace there. We don't know what is really preset, but if they are, that's all they're really trusting on so far. The great peak, and as you said, what Maestro can achieve from being left alone that deep is waiting for more body parts to come in range, and they're trying to just fork the diffuser down, but he's just shooting into the spine of PSK, holds the angle and covers over the shoulder, and manages to drop the Maestro, putting it in a two against three, but PSK is desperately trying to get this diffuser down, and if they can get the frag, Valkyrie pushes wide, doesn't quite catch it, there is still utility and smoke grenades and canisters into that, but here comes the diffuser, and now it's just a post-plant situation with KLN, bringing it to a three versus one, can Moringa pull this round for Liquid as they hold the angle, wait for the push from stairs. There is Kaid. there's a headshot. Swings around to the other side, finds the smoke, in and amongst the smoke, the Valkyrie pushes in against it, rotates around the side of the servers, and somehow pulls the frag out there against an almost unbelievable hold in the post plant. Moringa so close, yet so far all at the same time. TGM take the first round, surprisingly. Uh, Liquid, that early game, so, so questionable from them. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure what kind of happened with Nesk. Ran kind of, you know, brazenly forward and then wasn't able to really make anything of it. Uh, got kind of sucker punched by the uh, other side and the, the split hold there across the top. And then from then on, it just kind of fell apart. Yeah, they got the refrag, but with none of that potential down on the point, it was just a matter of TGM to pick off body after body after body. CEO, we're going to rotate here to next. Obviously, one plant, but it was diffused at that point. And I guess let's see if we get a little bit more of the liquid we're familiar with. Jackal is available. That's an operator that would help Liquid straight away if already they see that, you know, maybe we do need to try and hunt these roamers a little bit more. Uh, but no, they're just going to stick with what they're going with. So no Jackal on the board. Also, six picking away from the Maverick onto the Sophia. So perhaps they're thinking Maestro Camera is maybe a big thing that we could see Jens Mortis, of course, go ahead and play, and that's a great counter to it. Uh, but they're also kind of lacking that long-distance self-destruction. Sure, you're bringing back, but it's more, of course, close range compared to anything else. Valkyrie on the board, so IQ is going to be a great operator to try and pick off those cameras as well as she can. Uh, I love the way that the kind of Valkyrie can be played on bank because there's a lot of unique ways. You can try and play the cameras a lot more safe in towards the bomb site. Uh, then you can try and play C4s from below. But we've kind of seen more Valkyrie play a camera off site and have a pre-play C4 below that kind of skylight area because that's all wood and that can all be destroyed. And, you know, we've even seen it at that double door leading in towards skylight. Valkyrie sits in the camera, sees somebody walk in, off the camera, hit your phone, free kill. Oh, there was a certain, certain uh, UK Prem caster who actually just tweeted a clip of that just the other day. 
Ace, who uh, showed off that little C4 trap that you can do, but we'll see if anyone uh, anyone follows his Twitter account <laughs> as he starts to see the push down against CEO. Felsen and Venus yet again holding as a pair just off point, trying to wait and bait for any roam clear that comes through. There's the drones active from Team Liquid, which is better to see this time round. And obviously, hopefully, they can kind of keep their main striking force alive a little bit longer before they suffer the inevitable fate of being shot in the face several times. Felsen is going to rotate down underneath, see if they can catch anyone un, uh, pushing up from the garage side. A sexy cake yet again goes for this clear across the stop, but a lot of angles being held this time by Liquid. They're being much slower, much steadier with this. A lot of drones and movement and drones and movement. I don't think any of them at all have entered the building at this point. So compared to the previous round, they are not wanting to throw themselves into the lion's den again. Looking at the defense from Jen Morris, they're playing very heavy off-site. We have Roamers. Uh, Valkyrie, I think, is a great one, though. Still one black eye, uh, which is surprising. Don't know what she's going to do with that. Yeah, pocket. Um, you know, Castle's there. Try and cover off as many angles as you can. Also playing the dock in towards that canto position. It's so strong whenever a banner's off the board. It means that you can't be opened up from behind. Only real way you can get rid of it is, of course, to draw in the shield with a Sophia charge or perhaps trying to get a flame arrow in there from Capital. That could also be an option, but... Oh, we were talking about a certain rumor. He's been taken off. Oh, more than just pile on in. Liquid have just dominated this round so early on a 1v5 and it was that dock inside of the canto position is going to be the last man up. Rotates in towards the front desk, but this point, Fluke, I think Liquid have this round. Just a hunch. I have a feeling. Well, that's the Liquid we kind of expected to see out of the gate there. They were metered, they were measured, they knew how they wanted to do it, and no exit frags as Liquid respond with a surprising first round loss to a complete flawless open. That was just a flip of what we've seen previously from Liquid. Yep. That's what we expect from them. So that's the level now that they've kind of set that they should be f trying to aim for every single time. There wasn't a whole lot really to talk about in that round. It was literally Liquid moving in and winning their 1v1s. It was set up for a while as well. They, they knew how they wanted yeah, to hold Yeah, they're all it. spaced out, weren't they? Yeah, it was really, really nicely played from Liquid. And again, it's something that you expected to kind of see out of the gate. You can instantly see that, if, you know, KLN is going to the Vigil. They're going to try and keep that roam game. Going to try and keep that vertical control as well. Oh, I say, as Castle is being sick pick off to a mozzie. Kind of get a bit more vibrancy about the information being delivered. And we said there wasn't really any roams in the first round. In the second round, we said there was a good selection of roams. And now it looks like they want to try and control that. Mozzie is the jack of all trades. He is the operator on defense that can do literally anything. You have, of course, that shotgun, so you can help with destruction on sight. That can be a replacement to a maestro, who we've seen kind of do that as well with his bailiff sidearm. C4, again, another denial opportunity for him. Also an early pick. V Law of Destructibility in towards that top floor, and if Liquid want to try and aim towards that top floor with, you know, bringing Paul up there with the buck, trying to get in with the verticality, create those massive entry holes that, of course, Buck can do with the skeleton key, try and find those picks in towards sight. That could be a counter if that C4 does hit. And, of course, two great primaries, which you can't really argue against. Commando, P10, Roni. What's your, what, what's your kind of pick? What's your pick, Fluke? Uh, you know, the reload animation is my pick. Uh, the Commando. Yep, it's it's all that kind of, for me, separates it. They're just both really, really good yeah. guns. Chat, what do you think? What's your favorite? Let us know, P10, Roni, or Commando? Yeah, it's so rare, to be fair, to have an operator where it is kind of malleable between the two primaries or the two sets of guns that you can go for. Normally, it's very traditional. It's why it was a little bit of a surprise when they didn't play Sniper Shotgun on Kaid. Um, but with Mozzie, you can kind of run anything, and it has often some I'm success. I'm a P10 Rooney kind of guy. Yeah, that's the thing. And I support you for it. But Bataglia is going to try and hold on inside the point, make sure they don't get the quick and easy open. But here's Nesk again, droning ahead for himself. Sexy Cake holding the same big window. They've held the previous time, and goodbye, <laughs> Mozzie. Not paying attention, and you know Sexy Cake has been holding that angle every single round so far. Same window. And, yeah, again, another outcome for Liquid, which has put them in the driving seat. And we discussed liquids. They're looking as if they're pushing in towards that top floor, trying to get Paul in with the skeleton key, of course. And Moringa and Ness have just walked their way in, especially Ness. He is crouch walking. This is what we said. <laughs> Ness, he is the ultimate crouch walker. And not playing on the ash. Instead, the IQ is his chosen operator. And you can even see a little bit more aggression being added in here by uh, TGM. You can hold there, SMG11, and try and get those picks on to people who want to try and peek in towards that. But a quick refrag, though. So it has left Liquid inside of the 4v4. 
And now they can start executing in. So it's going to be more than likely top floor, getting in there with a the buck, trying to create those angles, and then finally pushing your way in towards the A-bomb site. You can open up that double wall, which Fermite's lurking towards. C4 cooked and ready, but that's not going to hit anybody. Oh, he's not going to hit it. He's just going to keep it there. There we go, finally, but does nothing as that wall's going to be opened. And now that mute, he is going to be in for one heck of a surprise whenever everything just starts raining on top of him. But TGM, they respond. KLN, eliminate Sexy Cake. More importantly, that Sophia stuns off the board. Yep, and then there is the mute off the board as well. Three versus three. Nesk brings it back to a balance as they start to try and clear a little bit more space before they push. Palu holds down on the top floor and drops KLN and keeps that vertical so he can start to open some more sight lines and make those final two defenders inside point feel a little bit more uncomfortable. They're running around a little bit loose and wild as PSK is looking to push close and Nesk finds another and it is now just down to the Jaeger trying to hold off. We'll hear the diffuser going but knows that they can't really move at this moment because as you can see, Buck is watching the door above on the rotation and they're watching the side as well. This is a pretty great shot down of a Jaeger that's losing more and more space as more and more time goes on pre firing for all that they can muster but at this point there is nowhere for them to go somehow pulls an absolute blinder of a swing headshot through the wall against PSK but as I said that door was firmly under buck territory that buck of course came in massive so we expect on a map like bank which has that destructibility factor especially in towards that mid floor might be a reason why teams have kind of shifted in towards open area because open area gives you a lot more opportunities to try and catch your opponents by surprise and no offense to tgm they were playing that tellers really basic like there is nothing there that liquid had to be concerned about that is as easy as pie for Liquid. You know, you look at their setup, there's no extensions into open area, there's no holds upstairs, you're just asking the buck to say, hey, just take what you want. Yeah, it's... I mean, I guess this is going to be the point where we see if lessons are learned, where the Team Liquid one was just, oh, maybe we're really underestimating this random team, and now let's start actually running some basic strategies, or if TGM can try and replicate the Lightning, see if they can get it to work again for a second time, find some creativity in what they were doing, because... Previously, it was a surprise, definitely for Nesk when he was taken off by the two upstairs. That's where they might find some success, but at the same time, as you said, you can't really forgo tactics. You can't forgo those strategies, those holds on the top floor for certain points as well. Like It just becomes otherwise a bit too loose. I'm curious now. Nesk has uh, brought Nook, and how are they going to try that push? Because last time it was a fast and aggressive on a sledge. It was loud, it was noisy, and it was ended quickly, but... A Nesk on a Nook. Whenever we see people play Nook, they are just by themselves, crouch walking around the map. Ness does that. This is an operator that can work well. Whenever Valkyrie and Maestro are chosen operators, especially on TGM for this particular bomb site, we've seen the impact that Maestro have. Maestro, who plays in Garage, typically puts a Maestro camera looking towards that main entrance where that police car is beside the barrier. They'll put a camera in there and it'll just sit and watch to see if anybody wants to try and peek that. Because obviously, whenever Liquid struggled against that Maestro holding that long angle, next point for them is going to be, let's eliminate that Maestro. Don't give him that opportunity to start tapping heads with the ACOG. So they're going to try and, more than likely, use Ness to try and crutch walk in towards that garage, being hidden by the Maestro camera, and then he'll be able to get a free pick. And that opens things up entirely for Liquid. Well, they're starting their attempted roam clear. And again, look at them actually droning out the places where they suffered previously. It just shows that this is a liquid that has at least woken up to the threat that TGM might be able to offer them. And from this point onwards, you would be surprised if they started to drop rounds, but you never really know. It's hard to count people out in Siege because one foul swing of wind can completely shift how a team is playing. Sexy Cake going for the clear on the top floor as well. Palu ready to open some rotations as well. It looks like unbelievable movements there from Sexy Cake, and that is obviously the skill we see. The second and it's Palu from above, yet again, causing nightmares with that buck on the floor above the operators. And now it's just a matter of trying to close down Bataglia as well, who suffers inside the garage. Expected from Nesk. That's the power that Nook can bring to the table on a map. Uh, like Bank, where you have that massive garage for Maestro, you know where he puts the camera. Also, disrespectful there from, from Smoke, using the FaZe clan charm. Look at that, that's just showing, you know, we don't care about you, Liquid. No, they're just doing it for the single drop of clout, I think, at this point. It's worth pointing out, Venus 16 has been the f 
first death of every single round apart from the one that Ness was. They're really getting themselves in unfortunate positions and that is the second flawless round for a liquid that seems reinvigorated. Yeah. I don't know what uh, TGM's gonna do here. Because, remember, this is Bank, where Bank has a lot of Defender stuff going for them whenever Habana's being banned off. Look at the kills. Yeah, seven and one. Nesk, ha that means he hasn't died since the first round. He was mm -hmm. the first kill in the game, and he is refusing. Neighbor's Polo as well. Yeah, it's, you know, it's the thing. They're just fighting now, fighting the way that we know they can do lockers. We're going to head back to now for the uh, first time, seeing the same point twice in a row. Not going to opt for CEO or Tellers, and... To be fair, at this point, you know, you may as well play the safest point because it, this is a hard liquid to try and shut down. I don't know if, if, uh, if TGM is playing too basic for the level liquid, of course, is at in their career. Do we need to see more risk being taken by TGM? Do we need to see a more dedicated room hold? Do we need to see an open area defense? Do we need to see something that will catch liquid by surprise? Sure, we see rumors from TGM. But the rumors are not supporting each other. I haven't seen one refrag potential from TGM, you know, in the rumor duo. Typically, we see that from great teams who have those great partnerships. Straight away, as soon as one person dies, the other guy's right there ready for the refrag. If you look at that last round, we had one guy from the defense playing inside of Elevator, another guy in open area. When are both of those guys ever going to cover each other with the angles that they're holding? That's it. And I think it looks like Jens Mortis are opting for a more turtly defense strategy here. You can see, obviously, Venus is going to go through the Legion on the far side. They've opted to drop the Kaid as well as the Vigil and kind of bring, I say, as Felsen runs to the top floor and tries to recreate the first magic. Okay, Felsen is going to roam by himself this time, and the rest are going to stick down below with a little bit more of an early warning system as well with those Legions, with the Valkyrie cams, which has been a pretty big and consistent staple in their defenses so far. They're just going to see if the single lone Jaeger can pick off one and maybe just put a little bit of a uh, stick between the spokes of a liquid that is currently rolling and relishing down here. Palu instantly pushing up and trying to clear alongside the Ness. Um, and look, Ness just crouch walking around with the Org, waiting to hear a sliver of information before he drops a Jaeger that is completely caught out. And mid-reload animation, Palu finds the man that attempted to push up the stairs as well. And this is just textbook from them. This is simple from Liquid. They have nothing to worry about whatsoever. Everything that TGM is doing, it's simple stuff. It's just Liquid can play the way that they play with their aggression. We know that Liquid have the bear gun fires. It's just up to TGM to see if they can try and create something on the board. Give them a bit of morale, because if you're going to give Liquid all this space to perform how Liquid want to, then that's where you start to have. If you give an attacking team their their game plan, and probably game plan for Liquid was eliminate both the roamers and execute onto the remaining final members on site, you basically give Liquid their game plan. Yeah, I mean... You know, I think, as I said, it's kind of hard as it's going to be to watch for a little bit. I think this is exactly what we kind of expected with this early round. Obviously, if the first test your team is met with is Liquid, that has been on very good form recently as well. Previous five games, they've won four of them from... And they didn't have the greatest start to their PL Season 2, so it's good to see them kind of on form, but unless you are Team Gens Mortis, where it is... Uh, less good. <laughs> uh, holding the angles and trying to stop anyone coming through the drop down. They're going for the diffuser at this point, and there's smokes and, and a smoke that drops PSK. But he tried to stick it out, and there is just one remote gas grenade left. And with 40 seconds, they've got to time this right if they want it to be as effective as possible. Nesk is going for the diffuse. Isn't going to throw it yet as more pressure comes from those drop downs and those hatches. The C4 goes over the top, and it does not connect. They Get the diffuser down, manage to stick it. Sexy Cake finds one and another, and suddenly, Liquid, Sexy Cake with a triple. Ah, oh, TGM, what can we say? They just give way too much for Liquid. They need to try and do something that upsets Liquid's game plan. You think about the first round fluke. They got those first two opening picks, it made Liquid slow down, it put them in a lot of pressure, then whenever there were still rumors upstairs, they knew they didn't have time to go and hunt them again. Yep. We've seen that Kaid come down the first round, he was able to create another kill, put it into a 3v2, then you have everything piling in. 
also a bit of lack of communication, I think, from TGM is a big thing from this. You think about the way that they were holding their C4s. That C4 should have been thrown straight away during the, the four-second mark at that diffuser. It was thrown way too late. Yep. Do they need a pulse, perhaps, in that gold vault? We know how strong the operator can be. Well, that's the thing. It, it can be absolutely monumental, especially for the gameplay that they were trying to run as well. They were trying to yeah, hold it deep. They weren't the keeping themselves top. so close to it, and that was maybe a combination of their strategy, maybe a combination of the fact that all of the hatches had been gotten completely taken over by the guns of Team Liquid at that point. But yes, they need something to be able to tie in with those strong arms. It was good to get a smoke gas canister kill. We know that they are capable of this kind of playstyle, but you've got to combine it with more reliable, more relevant information. And having a pulse in Gold Vault, to shut him down, you have to physically go and shut him down. You can't use your IQ to hit cameras. You can't rely on that playstyle which Liquid is doing. They have to try and get the man. So, yeah, I think it's a shame that it's currently missing from this lineup, but it's their last defense and alibi is what they've decided to bring instead. Yeah, instead of the Kaid, which didn't really have that much of an impact whenever Maverick uh, is a thing. And Maverick can get two hatches. Uh, generically, most people get two hatches. Sometimes people find it tricky. Well, this looks like a very pacey rush here, Palu. Already taking control of server room, waiting for the bottom of blue to try and catch them on the rotate. They've also doubled up with PSK in there as well. They are being exceptionally aggressive, droning up the server stairs on their in initial push. This is quick from Liquid. They know that server is always given to them. And here comes Ness, gonna fight in towards that garage. Sees the like, he knows Maestro's there. Let's see if he wins this fight against them. Bulletproof cam as well to try and support the Maestro. And Nesk now is inside of garage, and there's the headshot. Maestro bites the bullet. Oh, and there's Doc as well. Nesk doing what does best, that's fragging for Liquid. God, it just looks like a terrorist hunt. He makes it seem so easy as he clears through two bodies and completely takes the garage space. Flashing over the top yet again, going for the old familiar plant. And it's always a good thing to see them running those strategies and running those as Nesk almost finds a third. Felsen taking half health damage, but does good to shut the man down. They're ready to loop the C4 over. You can see the spots coming. Not 100% sure why they're doing hard spots instead of just calling it. Panicking? Is, is another thing. Uh, again, like we talked about, this is a team which has only kind of come in here as getting a spot inside of these cruise balls. We're not saying that they're the greatest team in the world. Here comes the C4 cook. Go for it. And somehow, you don't, you don't even throw it towards the guy. You throw it at the Maestro camera, but you make all four. What a great shot from Venus. But still, diffuser being planted now. It's a post-plant situation for TGM. How will he retake? Felsen, who has been playing well in the Jaeger. Finally, here comes the Alibi, but the cover is good enough from the Fermite. And from here, everything can be held, and it's just a slaughterhouse now for Team Liquid. Felsen, down to him. Last man. Lies down in cover. Reloads, but still, too many bodies left. Two players at least. You have that crossfire from Liquid. And even the Diffuse, it's going to be tough to get off, of course. And Felsen at this stage, just delaying the inevitable. Pushes in. See if he can add the kill. Nope. There's Paulo. I mean, I'm a bit curious about what the mute was attempting at the very end of that. They didn't like that Maestro camera. But the thing is, they're in a 2-2 at the very end, and he just blindly tried to charge. They still had three quarters of the diffuser time left. There was options on the table, but he kind of got a bit blinkered and just tried to zoom in, get the buck, and drop them that way and take them by surprise. And we've seen that Liquid are so good at setting up and holding angles and being trustworthy with it. That's never the point where you're going to take them. Mm. So. You have to give credit to Ness there, though, because that really put them to a great start. You're eliminating two anchors, one of those being the Maestro, who has caused liquid problems with the long angle he holds, and Doc as well, which we know Doc could be great if someone gets naded, perhaps, and gets downed, and you still have that stim where you can uh, relay back up. But liquid just dominant. This is what we expected from them. The only thing that liquid has done wrong this match is lose the first round. Yeah, and they lost it by underestimating their opponents. And just what, you weren't ready for the for the Jaeger and Kaid Rome game yeah, upstairs, which were, of course we know is so common. Floats. You know, it's a hard game. Sexy Cake could bring in Clash. We'll see how much trouble that uh, gets into in this. But you know, what we're going to see now is probably a better use of Kaid against the Maverick. They brought Gridlock as well. They're expecting the Rome game and expecting the ability to at least keep some control of it. Potentially going to try a more direct push as we've seen Liquid do pretty consistently across this, and Liquid going to hold up its pulse going all the way to the top floor. Maybe Nesk after a bit of revenge after how he suffered in the very first round. Again, you know, it, it, 
their punishment for that first round was them not playing properly. They ranked styled, they ran straight in, they tried to face check it, and they were taken by surprise. Now they're playing. Yeah. Clash being chosen for Liquid. It could be tricky for Clash to really find her way in towards this bomb site whenever hatches can be opened. And Sophia, we know it's common. Capital more common than uh, we see Sophia on this bottom floor. I kind of like the idea though of them using it as that kind of walking mirror window can be great. Sometimes seeing Clash be played at the top of server stairs can relay information. You play a shotgun behind that. That's a great combination, of course. Clash plus Warden. What do you think of that combo? Would that be interesting? I mean, yes and no. I think, obviously, Clash Plus is always a better situation in general, uh, map-specific. There's one or two points where you can have a Clash doing some fun things. That is a Clash just holding the top of blue here. And again, like, you know, it could be a good way of playing it. But then I also think of other operators that you could put there instead. I guess if you bait the Warden, they're expecting that they can just flash in mm -hmm. and hard push the Clash. And then, oh, no, Warden's there with the special glasses. Guns down three. Maybe Ella with the Titan Killer. I mean, Ella doing Ella things as well, um, and just having that kind of stun and being able to aggressively move against it. But I'm curious to see if Warden gets more of a run in with his new 2 2 stats. Mm. Yeah, that'll be coming soon as well. So it'll be intriguing how that uh, kind of goes their way. And there's Clash saying hello. That's, that's all she's saying. Not I like much else. I like that they've given her the little window to see out of <laughs> yeah. as well. Because that just doubles up on her life. If you think about it, they have to get through that. Uh -huh. And any few steps they take in front of her, let's see if there's another victim. They've at least fed the information. They've got the door from the side. Zephyr Charge goes in and Sexy Cake survives on a flicker of health. 25 and now they're just going to zap the next person and there is Capitao quickly ending her life. But Ness gets re uh, the refrag on Venus. PSK still alive, ready on the server stairs. There's still ADSs, of course, to help him. And quite interesting, Kaid will be going for the Kaid trick in towards that server. So they're really focusing on not allowing TGM to have any control over that. And with no factor on the board and Maverick gone, more importantly, those Kaid charges, they're here to stay. And Paulo, I think that was a kill from somebody pushing down in towards server. Yes, it was. And there's Sophia, the shot's rattled back through. And the sniper shotgun again lands through. It's just down to Capital. C4 seals the deal. Wow, Palu, that, you, that tricky kite. Why you bring that gun? That is why you bring that gun. It is such a monster, especially if you're a team that is as, you know, talented at holding those angles, holding those reflexes. That's one of the things about LATAM is the reflexes are so quick to respond to things that flicker across screen. And it always ties into obviously how well they play the strategy and how they were famous for their fracking game as an entire region. And for me, that gun just, plays perfectly into all of that. 6-1, match point already for Liquid. And well, that will set them up nicely going into Villa with a great dominating scoreline, asserts them as being the alpha male inside this matchup. Especially. Still, landslide is what we expected though, Fluke. Yeah, and especially as the next map again, if there was a map similar to Bank, it's Villa. Another roaming game, yeah. It's roaming game, it's size, it's tactically driven, and... Yeah, Liquid is giving a bit of a... Uh, it's a masterclass to some respect. They're kind of just... They know how to run this game. And it it's not that Attackers they're instantly locate. shutting down what Jens Mortis is doing, but they're kind of saying, well, this is our game. Try and stop us. Mm -hmm. And at this moment in time, TGM cannot find the answer to that riddle. Upstairs for Liquid. Which is the more second orientated spot that everybody goes to. Yes, Tellers is there, open area is there, but you need much more team communication. Uh, and you kind of play into the attackers, I think, because I feel as if if you're attacking open area or attacking in towards that Tellers, your first thought's always going to be, let's get upstairs, let's create some mayhem using a sledge or a buck, whatever you need to use. Whereas top floor, I kind of feel defenders have a great thing going for them. That's the angles they can play with ACOGs. I'm really curious as to what Nask is trying here. Oh, is, is he just doing the outside camera? Oh, yeah, yeah, he is. I was waiting for something ridiculous, and I think that's just my expectations of Bank at this just point. A very, is... Just a very basic camera. Although, if he gets the spot here and just pre-fires out the window, Parlu is doing exactly that. Drops the oh man on the my. top and keeps picking the fight. <laughs> Wants the follow-up, and wow. KLN suffers against it. That is what I expected. We're playing EU ranked all of a sudden. 
Yeah, but nobody does it quite like Latam. Bataglia is trying to get the long angle all the way across from the western side, but can't quite find it. And look at the fear that TGM have. They've at least managed to take care of the Doctor, but at the cost of us a fear. Valkyrie camera also been spotted by the IQ. So that takes out Nasks and his, his black eye. So now TGM. They're down a man. Sophia, more importantly than any, because that is going to be their only distant soft breach that they have available, unless there's breaching charges there from Twitch, which could help them, but not so much in this bomb site. So definitely Sophia losing that will come in to cause them issues in the late game, I'm sure. You also see the clip the Capital in towards those pillars, repelling over, where I would like to see him more up close and personal with that LMG fluke. I mean, yes, I think it's just what I would like to see. Obviously, I mean, first of all, I'd like to see that Jens Mortis have actually kind of shut down what Liquid was doing so far and be able to push them back. But the thing about the firefight situation is when you're kind of getting up up closer at range, I don't know if there's any a preference that Liquid have there. They can kind of pick firefights anywhere. They're bringing oh, big ACOGs looking. and looking for the violence from wherever, but... You know, where do you take them? Where do you want that fight? Also, Moringa on the Alibi, playing inside of Janitor, is going to try and use that to the best of his ability. Great gun, MX4 Storm. Minimal recoil at that great uh, DPS, along with, of course, the high uh, fire rate. So, it uh, should look good still for Liquid Impact. Trick comes in, and that's a success there. And, well, Fermite has to now try again, but there's still one more impact from Sexy Cake, I believe, and unless he's used the other one for a rotate. No, still has the one ready to go. So now for TGM, they've started to slow down now, Fluke, which you never want to see, and PSK still on a bit of a roam game, creeping up in towards the main stairs. Capital is downstairs right beside him. I think that's in Tellers, that's where Capital is, and I think the next gunfight is going to be with Moringa here. Yeah, I can imagine they're trying to catch that out on the backside and see if they can get some violence here. But there is the wall open. The impact trick didn't quite work, and Bataglia now has 15 seconds to try and keep the cover up as the Thermite needs to find their way into the point. They're trying to just find the opening. Going to try a smoke plant. PSK finds Venus, brings it back to a 3-3. There is not much time. Moringa finds another one and looped around the back, but Sexy Cake doesn't care. Brings the double to shut it down on this first half with a pretty dominant performance there from Liquid. First round was the only mistake from Liquid. And that was it. And since then, they took seven rounds on the bounce. So Team Liquid, they took the first map 7-1 Nothing on the board there for uh, for TGM they can take away with. That last round, just way too slow. But that's going to be our first map done. We'll be right back.
predict the outcome, win the game. Get live coverage and schedules for your favorite tournaments. Analyze, predict, and vote to gain points. Compete with other esports fans and climb the leaderboards. Straight. Everything esports. Download now on iOS and Android.